Welcome, this is Anna, and we're going to be starting Unit 3 on the male reproductive system. So this particular video is going to be going over the gross anatomy. All right, so the next couple of slides or a few slides are going to be the obligatory, um, the obligatory note slides. All right, now I know there's a temptation to go these slides and then ignore them, but they're actually kind of important because I tell you what things do in here. So the sustentacular cells form the blood-brain barrier, excuse me, the blood-testis barrier, interstitial cell that's making the testosterone. You know, what, what do these things do? You need to know not only identification, but also function. So this is the start of that information. There'll be other slides where I talk about uh, like the sustentacular cells and the interstitial cells a little bit more in terms of what they do functionally. But this is your beginning point, so don't blow through these. Actually take the information from these slides and put them into a table or a concept map or flashcards or something so that you can memorize the functions. All right, so here's another one of those obligatory slides. Um, know them. We want you to be careful with the spermatic cord and the vas deferens um, because people tend to mix them up and they're very different. So what we're going to talk about these in terms of difference is the location. Are they inside the pelvic cavity or outside? Okay, so in or out. Okay. And then um, the other way to think about it is what's in it. All right. The vas deferens is just one tube that carries sperms, whereas the spermatic cord is a sheath that's surrounding the vas deferens, blood vessels, nerves, and so forth, okay? So the vas deferens, if it's outside the body, will be in the spermatic cord, but the vas deferens can also be in the pelvic cavity on its own without the spermatic cord. So keep those differences in mind. All right, and here's the third one. Again, go through, memorize. All right, so now we're gonna be looking at the picture where you can see this stuff. Um, the APR, or the Practice Atlas, they've got two different sagittal views, one that's mid-sagittal and one that's a little bit lateral, and both of them are very useful. This one is a version that's slightly lateral, um, and the reason they've done that is so that you can clearly see the vas deferens right here, okay? And you can see how it's going over the bladder, so it's superior to the bladder, then behind or posterior, and it's kind of coming into this inferior posterior aspect of the bladder, okay? So, but let's actually kind of start at the, let's go completely external, and then we'll work our way in, okay? So this is skin right here, all right? So this is a cutaneous membrane. It's gonna come over here, and it's gonna form a sac, and this is your scrotum. The scrotum, actually is two sacs that are sewn together in the middle and you've got a testis in one and a testis in the other. All right, this is homologous to the labia majora of the female, so it's basically you sew the labia majora up and drop some little uh, turtle eggs into it and you get some scrotum, okay? So this will have like little hair and stuff on it, okay? All right, then you've got this layer. Um, the tunica, um, we're gonna see in a better picture of that, so I'll go over that then when we've got a better picture right here. Let's, let's just focus now on the testis where you can see that. We'll, we'll do the, the tunica albuginea and vaginalis when we can see it better on a different picture. So we've got the testis, which is what I call a turtle egg because it looks and feels like a turtle egg, um, a sea turtle egg. Um, kind of resting on the back of the turtle egg is the epididymis, which is kind of like someone slapped a worm on top of the turtle egg. I don't know, it works for me. So, and then the epididymis transitions here into the vas deferens, okay? Now the vas deferens, they are not showing it in, a, in this picture, but all of this is actually wrapped in a sheath and um, also has blood vessels in it, and that is the spermatic cord. So the vas deferens is inside the spermatic cord up until you get to this point here. This is the inguinal canal. This is a common site for hernias in men. 
okay? Um, so the spermatic cord ends right here, and then the vas deferens goes through the inguinal canal, and then the vas deferens comes over here, okay? And what you'll notice is next to the vas deferens, just below it, just inferior to it, is another gland that we call the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle and the vas deferens both empty into this segment right here, which is called the ejaculatory duct, okay? Um, now, here is the urethra coming out of the bladder, okay? Specifically the um, prostatic urethra. So the ejaculatory duct empties into the prostatic urethra, and then the prostatic urethra, when it goes through the urogenital diaphragm, changes its name to membranous urethra, and then we change the name to the penile urethra here. And then it sprays out, okay? Um, and I've got a mess on here, so let's erase some of this so that we can see it more clearly. All right, now, this is the penile shaft or the penis, okay? This is the glands or the tip, all right? Actually, let's change that. That is the glands or the tip, okay? This structure here is the foreskin, proper, more probably called the prepuce, okay? Outside of that is cutaneous membrane. Inside of that is mucosa, in case you were wondering, okay? Um, now, the penis shaft is made erect by the corpora cavernosa. So we have two. So this is the singular form, all right? The plural form is corpora cavernosa. Oh, they put a bunch of hair on him. Um, okay, so when that becomes filled with blood, it creates the, the erection, okay? And there's a very interesting um, TED talk on the structure of the penis shaft um, that you can look for. Um, it's actually really interesting the way it's constructed so that it's still flexible but erect at the same time. It's really interesting. All right, now, when the corpora cavernosa becomes erect, it would collapse the urethra. So we surround that with the corpus spongiosum. So basically, this would be cavernosum corpus, excuse me, corpus spongiosum all around the urethra. So that swells and that keeps the urethra patent, meaning it keeps it open, okay? And you'll notice that it completely surrounds the urethra, okay? But it also forms the entire tip of the glands, okay? Now what else can we look at? All right, it can be difficult on a lot of the models to find the bulbourethral gland. I find the bulbourethral gland interesting because it does not contribute to semen and it basically secretes a mucus that cleans out the urethra and neutralizes the acidity. So this is the pre-cum that you see if you've seen it. Anyway, um, that gland is wedged up in the urogenital diaphragm and it has its own duct that goes into the spongy urethra, okay? And I think I hit everything on this slide, so let's go on. All right, so now we're looking at a superior view. Um, and it, in this case, we're also seeing both superior and kind of a posterior. Wait, what are they doing? No, not superior, inferior. That's why I'm looking at it wrong. So this is more of an inferior posterior view, okay? And I know it's posterior because I can see the seminal vesicle and the vas deferens right here, okay? And those are located on the posterior aspect, okay? So here you see the testis and the epididymis. On this side, they're representing the seminiferous tubules. So the sperm is gonna go here, it's gonna cross the root testis, go into the epididymis where it matures, and then when you ejaculate, it goes into the vas deferens at Mach 1, goes all the way around up and here, and then the seminal vesicle secretes a fluid. The sperm and the seminal fluid both empty into the prostatic urethra. The prostatic urethra has little ducts that secrete the prostatic fluid into the semen, 
and then the prostatic uh, urethra is semen goes into the membranous urethra, which goes into the spongy urethra. Okay. Um, what I like about this view is now you can see the two columns of the corpora cavernosa forming the wings. These will be on the, they're actually on the superior or the um, dorsal side of the penis. So because this has been cut in the inferior transverse plane, you're seeing really mostly corpus spongiosum, which is gonna completely encase the urethra and then the corpus spongiosum down here. All right, so let's move to the next slide. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's a nice view right there of the bulbal urethra gland, which isn't labeled. All right, there you go. All right, now this view is awesome. So this is the dorsal side. This is the ventral. So what I want you to imagine is a shark fin on the penis. That's the dorsal side, that's the top side, that's the superior side, okay? So a dorsal fin for shark fin, that's why, I just anyway, it's fun to imagine a shark fin on the penis. So you've got the skin, okay? Now with the way this has been cut, you get a nice view of the tunica vaginalis, excuse me, of the tunica algae, ugh, albuginea right here, okay? And then, okay, let's see, let me, I don't like the way this um, converted to PDF, some of my words got messed up. So here you can see skin, okay? So this is cutaneous membrane, okay? And then let me change colors. And then you can see a layer of fascia in here, okay? And then there's another layer of fascia, and then the tunica albuginea, which is basically a, a form of fascia that's kind of encasing these structures, okay? You can see these, so I think of this as a face. So these are my two eyes, and they are the corpora cavernosum, okay? Corpus cavernosum is singular, corpora cavernosa is plural. Now down here with the mouth, what I like is you've got little, the opening for the mouth right here, which is the urethra, and the big lips are the corpus spongiosum. And so you can see really nicely how those form. Now, if we look over here at this structure, you can see the glands, okay? So this thing is basically, this, this view over here is basically like a cut through right there, okay? So if you cut through there, you get that picture, okay? Um, you can see nicely, obviously, the skin right here, okay? And then you can see how they have reflected back layers of fascia. You can see a little bit of the corpus spongiosum here, all right? And then this would be deep under here, the corpora cavernosa, okay? So this is all skin here. This is a mucosa, okay? And then the, all of this surface and that surface is a mucosa. All right, next slide. All right, depending on, it's, it's been an interesting transition over the last 20 years from circumcision culture to non-circumcision culture. It used to be that like 95% of males in the U.S. were circumcised, um, usually without parental permission. It was just done. Now parents have to consent and the circumcision rate is around 50%. Um, when I first started teaching AMP, we didn't have a single model that showed what a foreskin looked like. You couldn't find them. Now we've got a few models where you can actually find a foreskin. Um, so it's kind of been an, an interesting cultural shift um, to watch. So on these pictures, you can see where the foreskin has been um, cut off right here. And then here you can see how in the non-erect penis, how it still covers up the glands. Now in the child, for the first five or six years, this foreskin is actually adhered to this glands. In order to take it off, you literally have to rip it off the way you would like rip skin off of the body, okay? It's that closely adhered, okay? Um, this picture is neat because they do different colors to show the different tissue types. So you can see that this is mucosa here and that is skin. So you can see how it's a completely different epithelial surface, which is neat, all right? 
All right, next slide. All right, you need to memorize the three glands and what they do, okay? Now, I'm going to circle this one right here, the bulbal urethral gland. And the reason I'm circling it is because it's not part of semen. This is the clear mucus that's more alkaline and it cleans out the urethra and neutralizes the acidity, okay? These two, seminal fluid and prostatic fluid, fluid contribute to semen. So semen is three things, sperm, seminal fluid, and prostatic fluid, okay? Um, and if you take the sperm away, like if you've had a vasectomy, we still call it semen, even though there's no sperm in it, okay? Now, you could talk about a lot of stuff on this. I have narrowed down what you need to know in terms of function for this. So seminal vesicle, majority of the seminal fluid, majority of the semen is seminal fluid. It's yellowish, alkaline, it nourishes the sperm, and it secretes a coagulating enzyme. That's it, that's all I need you to know, okay? The prostatic fluid is only a third of the semen. It's milky and slightly acidic, and it wakes the sperm up, all right? If you don't have prostatic fluid, your sperm will not swim. They're just slugs, okay? So that's all you need to know. All right, I recommend that you draw out the pathway sperm and semen are gonna be taking through the male reproductive tract. Um, this is my version of it. You want your own version and you wanna memorize this because you will have pathway questions, okay? You will also notice I have color coded it so that you can see where you've only got sperm, where you've got glandular fluid, and then the bulbal urethral gland, which is not part of semen, all right? This works for me to memorize it and to memorize the pathway um, I need you to work on what works for you. All right, so now we're gonna look at more of the structures associated with the spermatic cord. Now this penis is nice because it's got a, a prepuce on it, so you can see that structure, you can see the glands, you can see the layers of the fascia. All right, so this is abdominal fascia that's covering the surface of the, the body, so between the skin and the muscles. All good stuff. Now, this is where your inguinal canal is located right here and right here. Um, everybody has one. Um, in females, you only have the femoral artery, nerve, and vein basically going through it. In males, you also have the vas deferens, okay? Also, in males, testes descend, all right? Sperm needs to be at a lower body temperature in order to stay functional. If you kept them in the pelvic cavity, they get cooked, okay? So around the time of birth, the testes descend. So as you take these little eggs right here and they pop through the inguinal canal. When they do that, they drag down the vas deferens. They also drag down some abdominal muscle from your oblique muscles. And now we change the name to cremaster muscle. And the cremaster muscle is a very thin layer of muscle that is wrapped around the spermatic cord. So um, I'm gonna draw the spermatic cord structure. All right, so this would all be considered spermatic cord. And within that spermatic cord, we have a number of different things. So I've already mentioned um, the vas deferens, okay, which is located, let me change color, right here. We also have the testicular artery. And then instead of calling it the testicular vein, we call it the pampiniform plexus. A plexus means a web. All right, the pampiniform plexus, you, so you can see you've got the artery here. All right, and it's coming down. You've got some little branches. You put the pampiniform plexus in because the venous blood is going that direction and the arterial blood is going in the that direction. The arterial blood is warm from being in the body cavity. And remember the sperm like it cooler. So you need to cool that blood off before it gets to the sperm. So you create a radiator. 
Um, and the venous blood picks up the heat from the arterial blood as they're passing by each other. So that by the time the arterial blood gets to the testes, it's cooler than it would have been otherwise, okay? So here we've got the structures for your spermatic cord. We've talked about the pampiniform plexus. We've talked about the ductus deferens, also called the vas deferens, and the testicular artery. And we've talked about the cremaster muscle, okay? So, so far we've talked about two things that we're doing to cool off. Actually, we've talked about three things to keep it cool for the sperm, okay? One, um, you've got outside pelvic cavity, okay? Two, you've got the cremaster muscle, which I haven't really talked about much. So again, this is made out of skeletal muscle, all right? And what it does is it lifts and lowers the entire scrotal structure. So it brings it close to the body if you're cold so that you keep your sperm warm and it drops the scrotum away from the body if, um, if you're hot so that you get rid of some of the excess heat so you don't cook your sperm, okay? So that's one, that's two, and then here is pampiniform plexus, all right? And that cools it off. We've got one more thing to help with the temperature regulation, and that is the dartos muscle. The dartos muscle is smooth muscle, and that is actually just deep to the skin of the scrotum. And this wrinkles the skin of the scrotum, all right? Basically making the sac a little bit tighter and closer in, which also, if you're cold, helps to warm and keep keep those things a little bit closer together to conserve body heat, all right, to keep your, um, to keep your sperm warm enough, okay? So I've got a lot of stuff on here. Let's erase some of this. Oh, I can't erase that anymore. I won't get erase that. I can erase this. Okay. Um, so again, you've got skin. You can see the dartos muscle embedded in the fascia, all right? You can now see the tunica vaginalis. So the tunica vaginalis is actually an extension of the sheath that forms the spermatic cord. So you can see it's been cut here and split up the side here. So the tunica vaginalis forms a little mini bag that goes around the testis and holds it. So then there's your testis and there's your epididymis, okay? I think that's basically everything on this slide. So let's go to the last slide. All right, now we've got a diagrammatic cross-section of the testis. And again, if you think of this as an egg, um, like a turtle egg, okay? Eggs all have a shell. The shell of the testis is called the tunica albuginea, okay? Then there is a thin bag holding the testis called the tunica vaginalis, okay? not to be confused with the scrotum, which is also a bag-like structure. The tunica vaginalis right here and right here will actually come up, and when it narrows into a tube, that is the sheath of your spermatic cord, okay? Now, the testis is divided into several football fields of coiled tubes called seminiferous tubules. This is where you do the spermatogenesis. This is where you make the sperm. The sperm travels this direction, and then you've got this web-like structure of tubes, which we call the reet testis. So this moves along here, and it empties into the epididymis. Epididymis is where you do maturation, okay? And it's approximately four days long. And as the sperm matures, it works its way down to here. All right, when you ejaculate from about here to here, the sperm shoots out at Mach 1 into the vas deferens, and then it goes in this direction. All right, and now the vas deferens is inside the spermatic cord. And that continues up, goes through the inguinal canal, so you're basically kind of right here, and then the vas deferens breaks away once it goes through the inguinal canal. Also within the spermatic cord, don't forget the testicular artery, okay? 
I guess I should change that to red, okay? Which has been cooled down by the pampiniform plexus taking blood in that direction, okay? Which acts as a radiator. You will also have nerve fibers in here, like right here, right here, and those are extensions of the pudendal nerve. All right, so that was the last of the slides for part one. So you are now ready to kind of compile your notes from this slideshow, and then you can go on to the next one.